Hi everyone, this lesson is on the causes and risk factors and some of the other associated symptoms of having floaters in your eyes. So some patients will describe seeing things that float in their vision and we're gonna talk about those in this lesson. So eye floaters, or otherwise known as vitreous floaters, is an ocular condition involving floating debris within the vitreous humor of the eye. So we'll just briefly take a look at eye anatomy. So briefly, on the outside of the eye, we have the conjunctiva and the cornea. Going further in, we have the iris, which is that muscle that gives your eye its color. So it's a colored muscle that controls the size of your pupil. We have the lens. Further into the eye, we have the vitreous humor. So this is the vitreous humor here. This is where we're going to see that floating debris. And the vitreous humor itself is most composed of water. 99% of the vitreous humor is water, but it's also composed of collagen as well. So there is collagen scaffolds throughout the vitreous humor. And this is where we're going to see some of those issues occurring. If there's any breaking of those collagen fibers, we can have floating debris of collagen. And that is what these eye floaters or vitreous floaters are. They are microscopic fibers of collagen that can clump together. Now, most cases of vitreous floaters or eye floaters are benign, but as we will see, some cases can be a manifestation of a more severe or serious condition. Now, the epidemiology and risk factors include the following. There is a higher incidence in patients over the age of 50. So as a patient ages, the vitreous humor can change in consistency. It can lead to what we call vitreous degeneration. So there can be a thinning of the supporting structures in the vitreous humor. And the risk for getting vitreous floaters is higher in myopic patients or patients who are nearsighted. Now, what are some of the causes of vitreous floaters? One of them is trauma or injury. So having a strike to the eye itself can cause changes or damage within the vitreous humor that leads to debris of collagen. Another cause of eye floaters is eye surgeries. So cataract removal can be a cause of floaters in some patients. Another important cause to recognize is retinal tear or detachment. So what can happen is if the retina, which is in the back of the eye, if it tears, the vitreous humor is connected to the retina by these collagen fibers. If there's any tearing away of the retina, there can be pieces of collagen that are broken and can float around within the vitreous humor. So this can be a sign of a retinal tear or retinal detachment. Vitreous hemorrhage can also be a cause of eye floaters as well. Posterior uveitis can also be a cause as well. And then another cause is posterior vitreous detachment. So posterior vitreous detachment or PVD is actually the most common cause of eye floaters. And this can occur with aging. It's where the vitreous humor starts to pull away from the back of the eye. And this can cause floaters as well. Now let's talk about the signs and symptoms of eye floaters. So not surprisingly, debris floating in vision is a symptom of eye floaters. These are often described as webs, spots, or bugs. So oftentimes patients can feel like there's webs that start to fall down in their vision and impair their vision. And what can happen is if a patient tries to attend to these floaters or this debris, the debris or the floaters will move around. So you might not be able to actually focus on the debris. In trying to focus on the debris itself, the debris will move around. So the floaters move around with eye movement. They're more likely to be seen in dimly lit environments. If patients have very serious issues with eye floaters, they will oftentimes have very difficult times seeing in dimly lit environments. And the reason is because the floaters seem to be more likely to be noticed in dimly lit environments. And they're also more likely to be observed in the temporal areas of the visual field. So in the peripheral areas of vision, that's where we're going to see floaters most often. So these floaters can be severe enough where they may actually cause vision to be impaired. So you can imagine that if there is very large floaters and they look like a web, they could actually cover parts of vision. So vision can be impaired. And essentially, if floaters are large enough, they can cause a shadow to form. So if you're trying to look, you may see some dark object. So it looks like a shadow is being cast. Now, some other signs and symptoms that could be associated with eye floaters include flashes of light. Flashes of light 
is going to be important to recognize because it may be a sign of retinal tear or detachment, or it could be a sign of PVD. The retina is where vision is actually detected. So that breaking of the retina can lead to flashing of light. So if there's flashes of light and more floaters in your vision, this may be a sign of retinal detachment or retinal tear. And blurred vision may occur if the eye floaters are due to uveitis. So how are eye floaters actually evaluated and treated by clinicians? So it's important to note that eye floaters are going to be a clinical feature of other conditions. So it's important to recognize that. Oftentimes, if a patient states that they are seeing floaters in their vision, that is enough to say they have eye floaters. But it's also important to do slit lamp examination to assess if there are any other ophthalmological conditions. Ophthalmoscopy is also important to perform as well. So these can help a clinician rule out retinal tear or retinal detachment. So again, it's important to assess for those conditions. Now, if there are any conditions that are found to be causing the floaters, like retinal detachment or tears, it's important to treat those underlying causes. But for the most part, there's no specific treatment for the floaters themselves. So a lot of patients may have floaters that may even impair their vision, but there's not much that can be done for those floaters. So if you want to learn more about other ophthalmological conditions, please check my ophthalmology playlist. And if you haven't already, please like and subscribe for more lessons like this one. And as always, thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you next time.